Hi, my name is Chris, and today I want to show you a monitor which I consider the best under the cheap camera monitors. And this is specifically interesting for things like teleprompter use and also on-camera mounting. Now I want to go over a couple of the specs as well as the features that this monitor offers. And we are of course talking about the Feel World T7 monitor, which is not 4K despite featuring that huge 4K number right here on the packaging. The monitor actually displays an image at 1920 by 1200 pixels. It is a 7 inch monitor, however, it does actually feature 4K pass through, and I have tested that, meaning you can hook up a camera shooting in 4K, sending a signal to this monitor. It's going to be displayed in 1080p, but then also relayed to the, for example, recorder or capture card you are hooking up on the other end. So there you will actually receive a 4K signal and I have tested that with my Atomos Ninja V which I have right here and that of course is recording in 4K if it receives a 4K signal. I consider that a bit confusing in terms of the packaging and how they are marketing this as a huge number right there but at least they're not hiding the actual resolution of the monitor which is actually also printed right here on the box. Now there are also a lot of other features which you can see here on the back. You have histograms, peak filtering, false color, like all kinds of things to better know what you are actually working with. And what I find incredibly important, and this is specifically important for the use in a teleprompter, is the image flip functionality. So this monitor actually is able to flip the signal in all kinds of different ways, which is super useful for a teleprompter setup, where for example, you want to send your computer signal into the teleprompter, but you still want to be able to use the computer screen, which you see on the teleprompter, like you would normally. And if you just send a normal signal onto a normal screen into the teleprompter, that usually means that the signal will be somehow mirrored and it's basically impossible to use the mouse and read any text unless the application that displays the text mirrors it for you. So that's why it's super important to have an actual monitor which has flip functionality to be able to just use it as if it were a normal display. This is also very helpful when you are actually shooting with a camera and you want to, for example, have it work as if you are mirrored. So if you lift up your right hand, you also see exactly the same thing as if you were to look into a mirror. Now, I personally like to not necessarily see it as a mirrored image because that way I actually see what you are going to be seeing. So for example, if I lift my left hand, then that's the corner where the eye is visible and I actually see that on the monitors. But now enough talk about the box, let's move the box out of the way and I have a couple of the things to show what you will of course get inside. Now the first thing of course will be the monitor and that's kind of funny, we can have a little bit of a mirror going on right there. On the monitor, we have two ports right there, which is the HDMI out and the HDMI in. We also have a 12 volt power port, which I actually am using because I despise using any kind of battery powered things here in this system. And we also have a headphone jack on this side. Then on the bottom, we have a USB mini for upgrading. Then we have a screw for mounting it. And we have nothing on the other side. And then on the back or on the top, I think this is, we have the buttons for the menu as well as another screw for mounting something on the top. And this is actually really cool. They have function keys right there, which is the F1 and F2 key. And you can actually make these keys do something that you choose out of the menu structure. For example, showing and hiding the histogram, showing and hiding the false color, or in my case, I have one of these buttons actually assigned to be the flip functionality. Then of course we also have the back and as you can see there are a couple of screw holes and a bit of a port right there and that actually comes in very handy if you want to use this right here which was actually attached when I got this in the mail. So this here is the battery adapter to run this monitor off of these batteries which are the Sony LP NPF 900 in this case and of course any NPF battery would work just fine. So you can just simply clip this in there and then push this down and it is basically just in there and you have that basically in there and it is locked in place and you can just screw this in place and hook it up with this little wire right there and then power this whole monitor 
just like that with a battery. So that works just fine. However, again, I use this in a teleprompter setup, so I don't necessarily worry too much or I don't want to worry about battery going empty and stuff like that. And that is why I got another, and this is not included in the box, I had to purchase this separately, another cord essentially. And this here is the side that goes into the monitor here on the side. And that of course is a 12 volt. And if you've seen my previous video about my camera frying or I fried my camera, and that is the reason why I have now these flaps right here on cables that are the same connector, which would fit into my dummy, dummy batteries for my Canon cameras but I have this written on here. It's a huge X, which means don't plug this into the camera. And then we have mon feel. So I know that this is actually for the feel world monitor. And on the other end of this cable, we have a European plug in my case, and this is a 12 volt and 2.5 amp power. And that is totally enough to power this monitor. So if I just plug this back into my main power station over there, this monitor is actually going to be turning on. So there we have that happening. And now it is boot up, showing the histogram in this case, a little X in the center, which is super helpful when I use it in the teleprompter to know where the center is or where the camera is. But we'll just put this to the side for a moment because there's a couple more things that I wanna show you in the package. This here is kinda of like the holder for the shade thingy so that you can use this in sunlight when you put it on top of your camera. And then we have this here, which is the shade that you can plug on top of this. So you can just Velcro this on there and then you can put this on top of the monitor just like so. And by doing this, you essentially have a bit more shade protection or more shade so that you can actually see what is going on even if you have a whole lot of sunlight going on. And I actually think that it's really cool that they included all of this in this package for just 160 euros. That's really powerful. And uh, yeah, I might use this in the future if I have use for this monitor outside or stuff like that. For now, I just had it in the box because I use this in the teleprompter for the most part. In a past video, I was actually asked about the menu structure of the Feel World T7 most specifically because of the flip functionality and how that actually works. But let's do a quick walkthrough here. We have the menu button right there, then we have up and down and left and right as here. And we wanna just go into the menu with that. Then you can see we can move, move down and up and it is kind of confusing there. We have the down picture mode. I have this set to dynamic mainly because I wanna have a as bright and contrasty of an image as possible inside of the teleprompter. This is not necessarily the setting that I would use if I wanted to judge whether or not the picture is well lit or properly exposed. However, this is a good setting for getting the most juice out of it. And if you go in here and for example, you change by going with these buttons right there to the user, then you have much more settings in terms of like brightness, contrast and all those things and then similar things with the color temperature are also possible. So that's something that you can set up there. And then we wanna go all the way up, oh, menu. And then we wanna go to the side, we can set the language right there. The aspect ratio, I set that to automatic. Then we have what we wanna see in case of no signal. I have set this to blue screen. You can put it to red, green, black, white, or blue. I think blue is nice. Then we can change the like menu position essentially, which is not necessarily something I would worry about all too much. How much backlight you wanna use, uh, if you wanna have it power on when the power is switched on or if you wanna just manually switch it on. Again, something for teleprompter use in my case. I just wanna have it switch on when I switch on my desk, which has one power switch essentially. And then we have the USB upgrade and the reset functionality. Now going back up, we have the zooming functionality. So I can actually zoom into the image right there or not. But other than that, this feature here is not necessarily something I have used. Then we can go back into the most interesting section and that is all the com camera stuff. So we have the center mark. And as you can see, that is turned on right now and I can turn it off. We have the safe frame, which we can set up. So if you are shooting with that in mind, then you can set that up. 
We can even have a grid, which we can switch on and off. Then we also have image freeze, which if I turn it on, it would essentially just freeze whatever is currently displayed. Then we have image flip, and that's something that I'm gonna demonstrate separately. OSD flip, which is the menu, so I can flip that as well, which would be useful if you, for example, wanna use this in a on the top or flipped manner, I guess. But anyways, you can do that. Then we also have anamorphic features, so you can actually de-squeeze things right there. Of course, just the display portion. So if you are using pass-through, then it's just going to be passed through as the clean HDMI signal without the de-squeeze of the anamorphic. And we are back at the top. And then we have lastly, when we go back and one more to the side, we have the function keys. And as you can see, I have this set up to display the uh, histogram or the other one the F2 button is for the image flip and so if I go in there you can see I can set this to all kinds of things like image flip aspect ratio focus assist and many many more things I think there's even so you have the animal freak you have the zoom center mark save framework check field focus assist aspect ratio image flip and we have false color overexposed embedded audio nine grid and zoom and anamorphic so lots of things to choose from right there i'm of course going to choose the image flip functionality and with that we have a full walkthrough of this interface on the field world t7 now right now i am sending a computer screen signal into this monitor at 1080p and as you can see it is completely normal and readable as normal text However, if I put this into the teleprompter, then this would not be readable. Now we can go back into the menu, navigate all the way to the flip feature. So that's on the little tools section right there. And now if I move down to the image flip, now I can actually go through. So we have a couple of different modes right there. We have a horizontal flip, we have a vertical flip, and then we have horizontal and vertical flip and we have the normal mode. And I actually think that it's really powerful that they include all these options to horizontal and vertical flip the image and also included the total flip of everything. Now, as you know, I have set up the F2 key on the back right there. So if I hit that, if I go out of the menu right there, I can just hit that and it just does these flips and actually shows the information which flip is currently active on the screen in normal readableness, so to speak. So that is how the flip functionality on the Feel World T7 works by itself. Now, how does it work when I actually put this monitor back into the teleprompter mode? Now I've mounted the monitor in the teleprompter and as you can see, the image is not readable on the teleprompter because it is getting mirrored up onto the teleprompter glass, which by the way is the 11T teleprompter. But what I can do now is use the button that I previously configured to be the flip feature so that I can actually read this text right there. And just like that, we have the text readable right there on the screen. Now, of course, if you want to use this as a teleprompter, then you want to have the text bigger than what it is right now. This is just for demonstration purposes. And for the use as a teleprompter, there are actually also all kinds of different programs that you can use and also remotes to use for forwarding text and stuff like that. And I will also make a video specifically about that, how the teleprompter 11T, for example, uses a remote control and even a foot remote control. And I'll feature that in an upcoming video. If you wanna know how I'm actually using this teleprompter to have line of sight connections with people on Zoom and similar calls, then of course I have a video for you in the description linked below and you can check that out there as I am describing how that all works and also how I'm using all of this to be able to film myself a little bit more easily.
But to wrap this video up and my final thoughts on the T7, I think it is probably the cheapest monitor in this category and it has a whole bunch of features like the flip feature for upside down mounting or use in a teleprompter, but also things like focus peaking and fo false color so that you can actually also use this as a on-camera monitor for better gauging whether or not you have the right settings for your image. And of course, as a director's monitor, this is also an interesting option. The seven inch, I think, for the purpose that I am using it right here is just enough. At the time when I actually got the 11T teleprompter and also this monitor, I was comparing it to another one, which is bigger. And with that came a couple of problems. For one, it didn't have the flip feature and it also did not have the brightness that is needed for the use in a teleprompter. So the T7 has all of that and I think it's a great buy. Of course, you will find links to the Field World monitor as well as the 11T teleprompter in the description down below. Those are, as usual, affiliate links which help me make more videos like this possible. If you have any questions specifically around this setup, you can leave those in the comment section down below or join my Discord server, which is also linked in the description. With all that said, I hope you have an amazing day. Make it easier for yourself to produce videos with a monitor like the Field World T7 and I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.